Nuclear batteries are getting serious. Yes, I'm really talking about batteries that deliver energy from radioactivity. These used to be niche application things, but I've recently come across a few interesting patents that give me some idea of what's likely to come next. We've talked about nuclear batteries a few times before, but those were all small batteries with very low power output, like the Chinese company BetterVolt, for example. They have this little battery that uses a radioactive isotope of nickel. It has a half-life of roughly 100 years and produces about 100 microwatt. There are also some companies in the United States which sell small nuclear batteries, like City Labs that uses tritium, which has a half-life of about 12 years, and the British company Arkenlite that makes a battery from carbon-14, probably in the range of some microwatt at best, with a half-life of 5,000 years. Perfect if you want to leave something behind for your great-great-great-great-grandchildren that isn't an unpronounceable German family name. These nuclear batteries excel in their lifetime and that has some uses like for sensors or some space missions. They are in the range of small button cell batteries, but because the power is so low, the range of applications is very limited. The interesting new development is now that the business is trending towards nuclear batteries with more power. One way this is happening is that the companies with small nuclear batteries want to stack them to reach higher voltage. For example, the company Infinite Power has put forward a patent with a battery that, going by this image, is about a cubic meter in size or so. They say that it can reach up to 3 watts. The Chinese company also says that one can combine their batteries from a few micro watts to several watts. Other than that statement, I haven't seen any details, but it's plausibly possible. So this still isn't huge, like you can't run a car with it, but at least it's enough to power a dim light. This sort of solution makes sense for applications where you need a long lifetime and aren't worried about space requirements. Ideal, for example, for some sort of beacons or measurement stations in remote locations. Maybe a webcam in Antarctica that sends penguin photos through the next millennium. But even more interesting is that some startups are moving on to a totally different type of nuclear battery called a radioisotope thermoelectric generator, RTG for short. You see, the previous batteries that I mentioned all use radioactive decay to create a flow of electricity. The reason they have fairly small power is the type of radioactive isotope that they use. But you can't use isotopes that radiate more power for those batteries because then they'll just wreck the semiconductors you need to generate electricity. If you want higher power, you have to do something else, and that's to create power from the heat. And this is what these thermoelectric generators do. The idea isn't new. They've been around since the 1960s. NASA has used Use them to power some space missions. They typically run on plutonium or polonium and reach up to some hundred watts. The Russians have also used strontium. The Russians actually deployed those things across the country for monitoring, for example, power lines. If you like true horror stories, in 2001, a group of Russians found such a nuclear battery that had been taken apart in the snowy wilderness and cuddled up to it because it was nicely warm. It didn't end well. Very interesting video about this here. If you find an object that glows for unknown reasons in any part of the electromagnetic spectrum, please stay away from it. To come back to the topic, there are multiple companies that are advancing these thermoelectric generators at various sizes and watt levels, and rumors say that this might partly be used to power military drones, which sounds all too plausible. The American company Xenopower, for example, patented a new thermoelectric generator a few years back that reduces the size of these objects substantially, as you can 
can see from this award-winning illustration. It could run, among other things, on Strontium. Their website says they are developing nuclear thermoelectric generators in the range of 10 to 100 watts, and they do this for space, satellite, and seafloor missions. But I bet the military is very interested in this. The company NDB, which stands for Nano Diamond Batteries, has also extended its scope and now plans to build medium-sized nuclear thermoelectric generators in the range of a watt to kilowatts power as a heating solution for space and communities. Howe Industries and NDB also work on nanoreactors. So these are actually nuclear reactors like the power plants that run on enriched uranium but produce energy in the range of some kilowatt to megawatt. I find this a very interesting development, though I can't help but think that the most plausible use case is post-apocalyptic bunkers. If you ever get the feeling that the news is more about storytelling than facts, Ground News is worth a look. Ground News is a news platform for people who value facts. They collect and summarize news, which has been published all over the world. Not only do they collect all articles on the same story in one place and give you a quick summary, they also give you a lot of extra information that you don't find in the standard media. An interesting example is this recent story about the German neo-Nazi who changed gender to female to serve in a women's prison. This received very little coverage by the media on the political left. Ground News also gives you a brief summary and a factuality check. You can also see who owns the media outlets and where the news has appeared. It's really taking news reading to a higher level. Ground News also has great feature called Blindspot. This tells you which news has been almost exclusively covered only by one side of the political spectrum. I found it to be super useful for checking whether a story is being blown out of proportion, ignored or distorted. And of course I have a special offer for you that's a 40% discount on the Vantage plan which gives you access to all their features. All you need to do is use my link ground.news Sabina or scan the QR code so they'll know I sent you. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.